Multiple times, the author of some of the best books on soccer, and most importantly, the patron saint of this festival himself. Um, it was Simon who gave Rachel the first push to sort of follow her uh, dream of putting on a soccer film festival. Um, but he is also known for his books, mainly Football Against the Enemy and his most recent success, Soccernomics. If you haven't read it, check it out. It's a great book. In England, it was called Why England Lose. Um, which will probably need another chapter in 2011. <laughs> um, Simon was actually, according to some sources, he's a Liverpool fan, but he told me tonight that it's not true. He's, he's totally neutral. He's I was wondering fan. how a man who was born, born in Uganda to South African parents, but grew up in Holland and now lives in Paris, became a Liverpool fan. But that's the way it goes, right? Something works in <laughs> well said. Uh, next assignment is Dave Kirby, who is the director of the feature film tonight, 15 Minutes That Shook the World. I'm the writer. And the writer, which we're going to get to. Uh, when he's not a Liverpool fan, he is a playwright in Liverpool, which makes you probably the most literary Liverpool fan in the world, or the most football mad playwright in the world. One or the other. None of them. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, some of his plays include Brick Up the Mercy Tunnels, Lost Soul, and Council Depot Blue, right? That's right, yeah, it's an uh, absolutely privilege to be in New York City. Okay. Well, he's brought some friends too who have been uh, raising a ruckus up on Broadway from what we hear. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got four of the guys, we've got the executive producer, the guy who shot the movie in, and we've also got Philly Cunningham, who's Jamie Cunningham's dad, and he's a legend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is Simon Borg on the end, otherwise known uh, as Cyborg to some of his friends, uh, who is a writer for, um, well actually he's a writer for me, uh, I, I'm his editor at MLSsoccer.com, which is the official website for Major League Soccer, and Simon is a native New Yorker um, who grew up with the Mets, the Knicks, the Islanders, and the Jets, um, <laughs> Sort of shows what side you're on in New York, right? All of those teams. But he was not a soccer fan until he moved back to his parents' homeland of Malta and spent eight years there and became a mad soccer obsessive. And now he is one of the most astute critics of the game in the United States, in my humble opinion. So thank you all three of you for joining us here. We also had the 1960s, Liverpool was like the epicenter of the world, you know, the Beatles and everything else. So I went to Anfield when I was six years of age, you know. My granddad went to Anfield, my father went to Anfield, and it's passed on from generations. And, and back then, in those days, uh, you know, football wasn't a life that option like it is today. It was a whole way of life, you know. That, that, that football club was, was meant everything. So yeah, I went to, to Anfield at the age of six. And, uh, you know, I, I looked at the cop, there used to be a little pen and enclosure in the corner called the boys' pen. And I was looking across at the, the cop and there was flags and there was, there was a massive colour and like to an eight year old kid, you know, that was, you was, you were gone, you were totally gone. And, and from that moment on, you know, this I was on this journey and as I said, the, the football club in, in the city, I mean, what it is, I mean, basically, it's, we're looking at escapism, you know, that's, you know, for, for 24 years before I started writing professionally, you know, I was in the construction industry and I detested my job, I couldn't stand it, it was a shit job. And I used to get up at 6 in the morning and detest every second, but at the end of that week, that football club took me to some, somewhere else, you know, and, and, and as it's gone on over the years, you know, you know my granddad's ashes are, spread, are scattered on the, on the pitch, my dad's ashes are scattered on the pitch, and that's the way it is, there's, there's three rituals a week I don't feel people get to the ashes spread on the piece. So it's almost almost sated the place. So you know the passion for the and the whole city is passionate. Liverpool's a very Celtic city. You know, that's predominantly from Celtic. You know, it's multicultural like New York, funny enough, but you know, it's predominantly Celtic and, and the pride that we feel for that football club, it's just everything. You know, it's it's 
I've done tattoos here. I mean, by, by the time I was 16, you know, I was on, on it's on, in Liverpool. If you're unemployed, it's called it on the dole. I was on the dole, uh, but I was going to places like Paris and France and you know, uh, Paris and Rome and you know uh, Brussels, uh, everywhere. And, but that, that that football club to me was, was you know, was my my way out of this shitty life I've been given. And and in, in, in Britain, predominantly, it's a working class game. But it wasn't until about 15 years ago. Now it's more, you know, the middle classes have come in and, and taken over. But you know, to, to guys like yourself, and, and I can think, I can speak for most British working class lads. You know, it's it, that that football team, you know, in your own city, especially in Liverpool, it's absolutely everything. And you know, it's as I say, when, when, when we won in Istanbul, for instance, you know, it's you know, there was there was, there was ecstasy, there was tears, and you know, for fathers and friends who were no longer here and stuff like that. So it's all these. Passions and stuff there, uh, all mixed and so on. But I think most in Britain it's, it's, it's a social thing, you know, because there's a class system in there. And then you're at the bottom of that room, you don't need escape is, is football. What is it about the game itself, though? Because you're discussing sort of the fans and the fans' perspective, you know, the eight year old looking across and you see the fans. And that entire description, you didn't mention the game at all. No, no. Well, I think well, that's, that's where the passion comes from, you know, because it, it's. It's, as I say, it's spiritual, it's in your soul, you know, it's, you're not just looking at something and scared that that's the song. You know, it, it, it's in there, you know, when that team wins, you know, you feel so proud. It gives you a sense of identity, it's identity, a sense of community. It's all these things rolled into one that, that make that passion. Plus the fact, I mean, we've, we've won five European Cups with a girl, and so I've been privileged to watch some, some fantastic, you know, teams. And, and our, our philosophy in, on the football field is attack, attack, attack. So I'm watching great things as well, you know, on, on so yeah, so all those things mixed in together, but I'm being privileged to um, we live the most still the most successful club in Britain. And uh, you know, I've seen a lot. I've seen seventeen titles, sixteen titles out of eighteen. I've seen five European Cups, I've been to Wembley twenty seven times, you know, it's, it's just endless my nice CV. So um, <laughs> the, 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 the team uh, the show, you know, I've seen Tal I've seen Keegan, I've seen Rush. You know, I've seen Robbie Fowler, I've seen Mike Alone, I've seen Torres, you know, so right throughout the ages I've watched great football, so yeah, mixed in with that fantastic team is the passion and the soul of the whole city and the whole, the, the football group is everything. Now, how does that differ for a small country like Malta? I mean, this is, European champions do not grow in Malta very often. I mean, Greg, I think what, what, what comes out of what Dave is saying is that soccer, uh, and it's different from all the other sports, and that it, um, there's, there's a culture there that's different. It, it belongs to the people uh, more so than any other sport. I mean, these other American sports are really uh, entertainment products that they try to convince you to come out on a weekend to watch. These are more social phenomena, what, what clubs are. And I think that's what takes it to another level. And they belong to everyone. And it's, it's everywhere around the world. So, uh, you know, every, every fan around the world can have the dream of one day being the best in the world. When it comes to the isolated groups that are the NFL, the NBA, these isolated clubs, I call them, you know, the, the, same, the same passion doesn't exist. Also because I think it's territorial. At its best, my best soccer experience have come because of territory. So in Malta, my best soccer experience to this day, better than being up on Portugal 3-0, Better than being up on Brazil to nothing is uh, is the the regions in a small country like Malta to have the, the village that's looked down upon because it's a farming village, which is where, where my family's from, going up against the big city within this small country and the the rabid uh, passion it brings out at you in the stadium when you're out not only for your team but to get at those other fans. I think that that's uh, it's almost a uh, a primal kind of feeling it brings out in you, and I don't think any other American sport comes close. Well, Simon, you've done a lot of research into the game and, and the sort of the anthropology of the game. Uh, Dave mentioned something about how 15 years ago, 